while back, I had a video about, uh, it was for Father's Day and it was about um, things that my parents, and especially my dad because it's Father's, it was Father's Day, uh, things that they did that I think helped make me and my brother Jesse um, more intellectually curious, more interested in rationality and, and in challenging our own beliefs. Um, and one of the things that I said was, you know, my, my parents were really good about uh, thinking about arguments and then um, changing their mind and, and sort of being open about the fact that they thought they were wrong when they thought they were wrong. And I said that this had made me, uh, this had sort of inspired me to do the same and that this is now one of the things that I pride myself on and, and aspire to. And one of the commenters said, well, how do you know that there was a causal connection there? You know, you don't have any randomized controlled trials. And this is true, uh, but, you know, I have more than just these two data points of my parents did this thing and now also I did this thing. Um, I have my own internal experience of being in situa many situations where I, you know, was, was sure I was, I was right um, in an argument or whatever, and then I remembered my parents' admirable example of uh, thinking about arguments and changing their mind uh, openly, and then deciding, yes, I want to do that too, and then changing my mind. Uh, and I think uh, this kind of criticism um, that this commenter made is something that I've seen a number of other times before, often from um, self-identified skeptics, where uh, they'll sort of apply the the criticism um, that's not a randomized controlled trial in cases where I don't think it actually even applies or or when the like the person's experience is not purporting to to uh, prove some some proposition that you would need a randomized controlled trial to prove uh, another example that I came across was uh, there was some discussion of Feynman um, and how he had sort of like uh, kind of mistreated women or or not treated them ideally. And uh, and there were, was an example given, or a couple examples of Feynman's behavior towards women. And one of the commenters said, anecdotes aren't data. And like, I mean, anecdotes are data, depending on what you're trying to claim or, or show. Like, those two anecdotes are not evidence, or not much evidence at all, that physicists in general mistreat women. Um, but there are definitely evidence that Feynman uh, mistreats women, at least sometimes. Uh, and so basically, I think that the like randomized controlled trials are the gold standard of evidence and uh, anecdotes aren't data, that those principles uh, are sometimes misapplied by skeptics uh, who uh, sort of like use them blindly or use them as an excuse to dismiss something uh, that they don't want to have to believe. Uh, so they're basically, they're, they're great principles um, that can like go wrong when applied <laughs> completely blindly.